The first one we're going to talk about is the exhaust system. And this is kind of the basic introductory exhaust system. The way this works is it depressurizes the house. Okay. You turn on a fan in the bathroom or a fan in the kitchen and it sucks air out of the house and pushes the air out. Okay. It's the cheapest way to vent a house. And I would say you could probably provide your ventilation system for about a hundred dollars if you got the absolute cheapest materials possible. Okay. What this relies on is either unintentional air leakage. So holes all over the building envelope to replace that air. And that would only, you'd only get away with that if people weren't enforcing the energy code and doing blower door tests. But otherwise you'd have to have just kind of some vents cut into the wall or something like that, that are supplying the makeup air, re reintroducing air. Okay. Because if your building envelope is really leaky, it's just going to draw in air from the outside under the house. Maybe there's a dead raccoon under there. You're pulling air from under there, um, through the holes in the wall, through the attic. Um, if the building is relatively tight, you're going to have a negative air pressure system inside that house. And you're maybe going to have some problems with backdrafting. Okay. You're going to pull in exhaust air because that pressure wants to equalize. Okay. We can create an artificial, um, pressure system, but the, the house is going to try and compensate for that. Okay. Draw in pollutants from the outside, potentially cause some backdrafting, have some carbon monoxide problems potentially in the house. So the next system is what we refer to as a supply system. Okay. And the way this works is it pressurizes the house. So it's just pumping air into the house. And maybe we've got some filters on those supplies and like removing pollen or something like that. Again, this is kind of an easy system. And just with this diagram here, we've got a central fan, but instead of a fan blowing air out, it's sucking air in from the outside and distributing into the house. Okay. We're forcing air into the house. And then we're also having some way for that air to leak out. Okay. So we're exchanging the air in the house. We're bringing in fresh outside air. Okay. This is better than just a regular exhaust system because we don't have to worry about backdrafting. Um, if it's filtered, we don't have to worry about pollutants as much. But the problem with this is we're in the middle of winter. It's 30 degrees outside. We're bringing in 30 degree air. Okay. And then we're pushing out that conditioned air that we've worked so hard to heat up. Okay. So this again is a pretty basic system that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it might fly in certain places. When we, jump up to a balanced ventilation system. This is neither creating a negative air pressure or a positive air pressure system. Okay. It's mixing. It's exhausting air at the same time it's supplying air. Okay. Not necessarily mixing it, but it's accomplishing both at the same time. So there's a loop. Okay. We've got bathroom fans running that are exhausting air. And at the same time, we've got another fan running that's bringing in air. Okay. So whatever air we exhaust is being replaced. Okay. Hopefully we have some sort of filtration there also. So we're controlling the quality of the air that's coming in. All right. Generally the way this works is we're exhausting air from places like the bathrooms or the kitchen or the laundry room. Okay. Places that we're creating a lot of moisture, maybe places that smell bad also. Okay. We're exhausting air out of those rooms. And then we're introducing air into the bedrooms, places that we want lots of fresh air. Okay. We're pressurizing the room that's full of stinky socks, for example, and pumping fresh air into that room and circulating the air that way. Okay. 
Now there's a way that we can kind of make this a lot nicer, and that's with the introduction of an ERV, which is an energy recovery ventilator, or an HRV, a heat recovery ventilator, okay? But if, if we don't have those things, if we don't have one of those things, and all we're doing is pumping air in and pumping air out, we kind of have that same problem where we're introducing unconditioned air into the house, okay? Maybe it's really cold outside and we're trying to keep the house warm. Maybe it's really hot outside and we're trying to keep the house cool. We don't really like that idea of just introducing air from the outside that we have to then heat or cool again. Now, when we talk about the energy recovery system, that is incorporating that heat exchanger, either that ERV or that HRV, okay? It's the same concept as the balance system, okay? We're bringing in fresh air, we're exhausting stale air, but this heat exchanger is mixing the incoming air with the outgoing air, okay? So we're recovering the heat from that air that we're exhausting, okay? Because, it, you know, we want to vent the house, but it's a huge waste of energy to heat up air or cool air inside the house to just pump it back out of the house again, okay? And then bring in something from outside that isn't conditioned that we're going to have to heat or cool all over again, okay? So this piece of equipment is called a heat exchanger, you know, generally, but there's two different varieties of that. One of them is an HRV, one of them is an ERV, and we'll go over that difference right now. The ERV, as opposed to the HRV, can also remove moisture, okay, which is a big benefit if you're trying to keep the humidity levels down in the house, okay? The HRV doesn't have that feature. I'm not entirely sure why. And I kind of think these are becoming a little bit obsolete and everyone's just moving towards those ERVs, okay? The energy recovery ventilator. But the biggest, the other biggest thing about these is that it's pretty incredible how much of the heat they can recover, okay? Up to 85% of the energy is recovered, okay? So if you're running the heat in your house and it's 70 degrees and you're exhausting that 70 degree air, okay? It's recovering 85% of the heat from that air and then mixing it with the incoming air, okay? Oh, excuse me, I got it backwards here. We're coming in here. Okay, so this is fresh air from the outside. It's all full of water. It gets mixed. Okay, I think this is like an example for an air conditioning situation, which is so foreign to me. Okay, I would think it would be we want the orange going out. But okay, they've got orange hot air, moist air coming in. It mixes here. It removes the moisture, and it cools that air down, sending it to the inside. But it works both ways too, right? It's cold outside. We bring in cold outside air, we mix it with our outgoing warm conditioned air, and we send in air that's been conditioned to a certain point, okay? These have filters in them, so you can clean, change those filters occasionally, keep the indoor air quality up inside the house. So wrapping this up, there is potentially source contamination for your house, okay? You could be sitting on top of a pile of radium that's emitting radioactive gas into your house, okay? There are ways to mitigate that. There are ways to test for that. But generally, poor ventilation and increased humidity levels, those are the big culprits. Those are the things that are gonna cause most of the problems with the indoor air quality in our house, okay? We have to have, we have to have mechanical ventilation. How far you want to take it is up to you, okay? You can go from $100 for probably the silliest, least effective, but it'll get you by ventilation system, up to about $2,500 for a system that's going to supply fresh air to your bedrooms, filter out the air, recover a lot of the heat, remove excess humidity, okay? I would say that is the way to go. That's the way that CR is building a house is we're putting in an energy recovery ventilator, okay? 
we can either create a negative air pressure system or a positive air pressure system, okay? Or we can combine those two. We can supply air, we can exhaust air, and use the heat exchanger to mix those two together. But the biggest kind of underlying issue here is humidity, okay? Humidity is gonna cause mold growth if left unchecked. Negative air pressure systems, not understanding that we might need makeup air if we're using combustion appliances, that can lead to backdrafting carbon monoxide problems, okay? I kind of think that the solution is not using any combustion appliances in the house anymore. Fully electric, we don't have to worry about carbon monoxide anymore, okay? We don't have to worry as much about makeup air and stuff like that, okay? But that's my opinion, and I hope this has been helpful. Um, please email me if you guys have any questions, and be safe, be healthy. I'll talk to you soon.